So, Dr. Bandia, you hear us? Very welcome. Namaste from Switzerland. Namaste from India. Uh, thank you very much for your time. And we are all very much looking forward to your contribution. You have heard via the live stream the thoughts of the Indian ambassador to Switzerland, and the floor is yours. Please, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Casanova, Dr. Aditya. I'm truly humbled, and it's indeed the matter of proud and privilege to be among this uh, very erudite and a scholarly forum. So you have given me a tough job to speak and share the case after the powerful speech of the various ambassadors and the scholarly speakers who have been addressing the forum so far. So without further ado, let me also test the, the tolerance of the technology because I want to share uh, 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 audio visual and uh, I, I just got to learn that there is some challenge uh, and technical interruption. So let me try share my screen and if I would be able to share the AV, otherwise I'll start uh, running the deck immediately. So let me try. I'm sharing my screen. Can you see, uh, see the? Can you see and can you have the volume? Can you hear the volume? This I don't know because it's not running at the moment. Can you see the screen first? I we just, see uh, it. Then yeah, I'll... we see it. Okay. The volume we don't hear, but we can read what it's said. Can you see my screen, Mr. Casanova? Yes, absolutely. And we hear you also Perfect. clear and well. Perfect. Thank you very much. Sorry for the interruption. I, I was uh, keep on having the audio, but I think there is some challenge uh, at that end. So without further ado, uh, let me also uh, extend the, the warm thank you for all the, uh, the, the delegates who invited me. And it's really a privilege and proud to be part of uh, this entire forum. So uh, just wanted to reiterate and I would be rejoined uh, to the discussion what Honorable Ambassador spoke about the best practices in the field of ESG and sustainability uh, from the India side and uh, how can the SRK be left behind when the, the India is there at the signing phase and setting the benchmarks for the world 
uh, by establishing the very erudite and scholarly uh, benchmark practices in this field of ESG and sustainability. So SRK, just to say, I basically lead the global human capital and sustainability portfolio of Sri Ramakrishna Exports Private Limited, which is uh, led by Mr. Govind Dolakya, who is the founder and chairman of SRK Group. And uh, proud to say that since the April 2024, he's also the honorable member of parliament, upper house of uh, government of India. So just to share some of the glimpse about the SRK Group, who have no, not heard the name of the company enough. Uh, it's a globally renowned the diamond manufacturing export company, having the the clientele in more than 80 countries out of 195, uh, having the manpower of more than 600 employees in more than six countries, uh, and the group revenue of almost a two billion uh, US dollar. But indirectly touching the millions of life with uh, regards to our social welfare and the philanthropic activities, and also setting the benchmark in the sustainability as we are speaking, and we are here in the, uh, the ESG and the blockchain. Uh, the conference. Just to share, because when we are talking about diamonds, it's mainly being rated about the 4C, which uh, includes the color, clarity, carrot, and cut. So that's uh, the, the core forte of our company and the, the core, uh, the portfolio in which the nature of operation uh, belongs to the SRK. And uh, the quadruple bottom line, what we say, uh, at large, what we follow in the, the culture of SRK is mainly the people, profit, planet and purpose, because we keep on saying till the time you don't see serve your people with a great care and concern, you won't be able to earn the profit. But even after earning the profit, if you are not doing the enough for the planet and the society, then your profit is of no use. And that includes the fourth uh, principle of SRK, which is the purpose why we are here in this world and how we are being able to contribute uh, for the larger and a noble cause within the society. So uh, this is one of the facility SRK Empire where I'm sitting right now and the other facility SRK, how the journey started in uh, 2011 when we centralized the entire manufacturing process uh, uh, centrally. And uh, the insertion of the company, however, is in 1964. But in 2011, we set up this building and uh, we appealed for the uh, USGBC certification. And first, in the, in the go first go, we got the attainment of a lead gold in 2015, which got converted into the highest attainable rating in 2018 by US Green Building Council, which is a lead platinum. And another facility which I'm referring to is the SRK House, which you can see on the right side of the screen, also attained the lead platinum in the first go uh, in 2020. So the leadership of SRK is quite committed that whatever we do ultimately has to be the benchmark of the of the of the society and not only as part of the uh, it has to be limited to the industry. So uh, also to extend the journey, we also become the member of SPTI and the UNGC and proudly can say the first member across the world from the James and Jewelry sector. And when I was talking about the green building status, uh, you all would be proud to know that uh, USGBC might have certified more than 1.5 million projects in 185 countries uh, so far. And out of those one, more than a million projects, if you go to the art score, which is a real time dashboard uh, provided by USGBC and you go to the impact section and since more than four years, we have maintained the position of top five buildings of the world out of one million certified projects in 185 countries. But that was not the, the full stop. Then again, we thought what's next even after sustaining that position for four years. Uh, then we thought of to turn into net zero and finally we attained and then you can also uh, Google it out. You can see the global PR and the ambassador just spoke that the how Indian companies are also contributing uh, to the net zero journey and the carbon neutrality. So as far as the net zero certification is concerned uh, across the James and Jewelry sector, we are the world's first, but in India across all the sector, we attained it for the first time. And uh, I just also wanted to pass a message to the to the members that uh, one perspective is that when you are doing anything out of the obligation to the legislation and the other perspective where we come from 
that out of no obligation, even SRK is a privately owned company and we don't, uh, we are not being mandated even by the stock exchange and the other market players that we are supposed to uh, follow the, the rules and regulation like which is applicable of the Indian listed companies called BRSR, Business Responsible Sustainability Reporting. But whatever we did, starting from a green building certification till the net zero journey, is purely voluntary in nature. So this is something which is quite unique in nature that out of nowhere, you are just doing it not to just adhere to the compliances and legislation, but do you really want to uh, walk an extra mile and do some unprecedented, do some really good for the giving back to the mother nature. So that's the belief system and that's the culture in which we work at SRK. These are some of the, the usage pattern of the energy, uh, how we run our operations in the manufacturing side. I just wanted to show some data how over a period of time we have also been able to uh, reduce the energy consumption uh, for that respective entities. And that's the figures. I'm not going into detail in the interest of the time because I think we are already running rate. I don't want to delay it further. And some of the data of the last three years, I thought would be a right matrix to uh, share it with you all. So these are the things. And we also wanted to compare that the, the uh, benchmark or the certification what we attained so far, how it is actually making the difference and walking an extra mile, what are the set guidelines? So we also went ahead and also proactively did something extraordinary over and above the guidelines, and you can actually compare uh, the difference of what actually we have attained and what are the guidelines are saying. So that is again a, a unique benchmark, what we try to achieve in comparison of the existing standard and what actually we did it uh, at the ground level. And and these are some of the uh, and then we never stopped there. So we also thought of because uh, the manufacturing facility is based out in the western part of uh, Gujarat, which is one of the state in the western India. And uh, Surat is the hub for diamond manufacturing. If you see the uh, ninety percent of the diamonds across the world passes through Surat. So that's the worth of Surat while having uh, the the weightage in the uh, diamond manufacturing and. Uh, operations are concerned. So we also thought of to uh, do one sustainability conclave, which is again for the first time we did it in Surat and that was completely been organized by SRK and we, uh, we also shared and released our first uh, pure impact report, uh, which uh, and some of the portions of the report I'm referring to uh, when they, during this conclave uh, last year. And this is a report I'm referring to that you can go. I'm not going into the detail because the report is very widely available on the website of SRK and you'll be able to see the uh, the entire proposition in detail. Uh, coming to the sustainable development goals, I really want to uh, reiterate on the fact that out of the 17 SDG goals, uh, fondly we'll be able to attend and doing a very robust uh, compliances on the 14 sustainable development goals and we are still working on the rest of the three goals which on which we are I'm, I'm also going to give you a reflection in which uh, how 14 goals have been identified these are the some of the the compliance as mentioned in the av that's not only the world's largest and the one of the most philanthropic company at the same time but it is also the most uh, complied uh, uh, company across the James and Jewelry sector with having the series of the management practices and the standards what we follow. And just to reiterate on the PS 7000, uh, that was something unique, which is the British standard. And again, we become the first in the world uh, across James and Jewelry sector to attend uh, and certify our entire supply chain uh, management. Wow. And these are some of the, the, the pure traceability when we talk about the yeah. blockchain is one of the topic of this uh, so we also provide the end-to-end -end traceability uh, to our customers when we export. So it's a B2B company, but still uh, we, we proactively do it and uh, any customer can go and, and find the entire trail of that supply chain. Uh, that's that's quite unique and uh, we are observing this thing in since more than a decade of now. And I was referring to the SDG goals. So these are the uh, some of the right. goals in which we are working and aligned. Uh, with the SDGs and uh, in the interest of the, the number of slides, I've just written into the entire spectrum in which we are working and doing good, uh, trying to uh, do it better 
uh, day by day contributing to the SDGs. And then also we are uh, signing the uh, the uh, various MOUs with UNGC and both SPTI, how we can also set the benchmark and uh, promote the, the concept to the other uh, companies in India. And beyond Diamond, as we are talking about the philanthropy, even the Honorable uh, Ambassador talked about the law came in 2013 to spend 2% of the CSR of the, the profit. But again, we set the benchmark and went beyond and above the legislation because if you see the annual average uh, of last two decades, because uh, 2013 to 2024, it's almost 11 years. But since two decades, the annual average of CS has spent is more than 4.5%, 4. 4. which is quite uh, uh, voluntary in nature. And that uh, uh, portrays our philanthropic uh, commitment uh, by the various verticals, uh, which is uh, SRK Knowledge Foundation and uh, other CSR initiatives. And I'll, I'll uh, in a minute, we'll touch upon these are the various areas uh, which are the core verticals of our, of our foundation, which is SRK Knowledge Foundation. And uh, these are some of the areas in which we are doing uh, philanthropy uh, with, with the pure and a noble heart uh, in India. And I'll also try to ch touch upon some of the figures. I'm not going into detail again, like to reflect uh, better things on the figure, but you can all see that the beneficiaries of the society uh, in the various domains, how we have been able to cater uh, the sense of uh, philanthropy on the ground level rather than just getting it on the uh, documented on, on the paper. So this again, very unique uh, perspective, which is the Santok by Humanitarian Award, which we got incepted in 2006 uh, with the name of uh, my chairman's beloved mother. And some bit starting from Sam Petroda to 2006 to the many novel writers like Kailash Shatyarthi and uh, Dalai Lama uh, in the given year. Uh, and then again, the, the last award function happened in Ladakh when we awarded Sonam Bangchuk. And uh, so uh, I can proudly say that in 2017 18, when we did that function, it was a joint award of 2017 and 18. And you can see the former president of India, uh, Mr. Ramnath Kovinji, came to Surat by breaking all the protocols and did awarded uh, A.S. Kiran Kumar, the former chairman of ISRO, and the Kailas Satyarthi, the Nobel laureate. Uh, because the award was such uh, 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 with a, so, such a prestige, and I invite if any one of the attendees or the members of that forum is there in India on 10th of August, then the the 2024 version is due. We are doing it in Mumbai, and again we will share the invite in the due course of discussion, uh, which is which is happening in Mumbai. Thank you. And, uh, just to uh, I'll, I won't take more than two minutes. Some of the initiative what we did during the COVID when the entire world was facing it and we also extended the hand of help to the society and uh, did our best by setting up the, the various medical centers and the, the observations home and then food distribution across the supply chain. And uh, to, uh, also to cater about our employees, we did not do a single layoff. And then the, we paid full salaries of the lockdown to the entire 6,000 employees. And the district got repeated again because we did the same during the 2008 recession as well as, and that's the commitment even towards the, the employees and uh, some of the uh, glimpse of the our solar initiative, how we have uh, made the first private village set up in the hometown of the chairman by establishing a three kilowatt panel on the 400 household of the entire village and distributed among the entire workforce of SRK. And these are some of the initiative and tree plantation drive and uh, uh, some of the cleanliness drives. And also we uh, got awarded by uh, Dan and Brestry 2023 as the top ESU warriors in India. And I think I'll, I'll conclude my session. So I would just uh, say the last to conclude my session with a quote that the test of our progress is not whether we add more to those who have abundance, but whether to provide too little who have really having a scarcity of that. So I would just confuse my uh, note on that. And uh, I'm, I'm not sure that we are having time for the question answer and leave it uh, the session to Mr. Casanova. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you very much, Dr. Nandir. Thank you very, very much. So it's really a 
an impressive best practice example, how we judge it uh, from the ESG Center of Excellence. When I traveled last year to India and I visited the Secretary General of the Gems and Jewelry Trade Association, so the Export Council, we were traveling to the building where the diamond horse is. So the diamond bush, right? You might be in Mumbai. Yeah. Right. Yes. Right. So while walking there, he said, by the way, in this building, one building, 9% of India's GDP is produced. Right. So just to give you a context, what the diamond industry, the importance for India is. Right. And here we see it's really a shining star in the way that they go far beyond what regulation and laws basically is, is asking uh, because they feel this responsibility in their DNA. And that's why we are very happy that you were willing and able to share all this information. And thank you very much for your availability. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you, Mr. Casano, as you touch upon the Bharat Diamond Bush in Mumbai. Now, next time when anybody is traveling to India, I'm inviting them to the world's biggest office, which is also bigger than the Pentagon, which got inaugurated six months back by the Prime Minister of India. And we also did the inauguration of our office just four days back in that campus. So there are 4,000 companies in that building, 7.55 million square feet. And uh, it's, a, it's a, it, it can be considered as the eighth uh, wonder of the world uh, by having the biggest office tag. Uh, which go, we got it six months back, and that too in a tier B town of India. Yeah, thank you very much for all these insights. Namaste, many greetings from thank Switzerland you. to India. Uh, thank you very much. It was nice talking to you all. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you.